In this video, I'd like to share with you some of my insights since painting with overbrush and how it has made me enjoy the hobby even more. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connecting to the great mind. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So if you have noticed I've changed my painting style drastically over the last few months and I've adopted this technique called overbrushing. So maybe what is overbrushing? Overbrushing basically is using a huge brush that is slightly moist than them and moving across the model to pick up some details and it is distinctly different from dry brushing because the paints tend to be a little bit wet and leave some trails behind. So that is the inherent difference between dry brushing. If you need a refresher about what overbrushing is and how I do overbrushing, you can check out our overbrushing intro video, links in the description below. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you some of the changes that I've felt and experienced since adopting the overbrush method. So if you're ready, let us begin. So the first benefit about adopting this overbrush method ever since was, I feel that I've become a much happier painter. The method of using overbrushing is, in my opinion, a lot more liberating than having a controlled medium and being very very careful with every brush stroke. This allows me to be very expressive and be very messy and yeah, I've been very happy since painting like that. I find that the overbrush method is a lot more liberating from the large and exaggerated movements and also it has taught me a very valuable lesson about completion rather than perfection. Since adopting the overbrush method, it has taken significant amounts of pressure off my painting because, well, simply because it's a lot more messy and I give myself room for mistakes. As such, this allowed me to really reconnect with the hobby and enjoy it once more. And also because this is a very fast and efficient technique, timelines are within sight nowadays. In the past, a large model would normally take maybe anywhere from a week to three weeks maybe. However, now with overbrushing, I can more accurately gauge how fast and how quickly I can cover the model in paint and color so that, well, I can more accurately judge how fast I can do this. This is even applicable to larger models. So in larger projects such as my Attack on Titan Mega Gargan, yeah, I, I really gave myself a very very strict timeline of finishing it within three days and because of this overbrush method and my new painting ideology just makes it so much more feasible and possible to finish the even large models in three days. Hence, this has made me a lot happier and yep, I can enjoy the hobby once more. The next more obvious benefit to overbrushing is you get a lot quicker. So in overbrushing, we use a really large stencil brush and we really just smack some color onto the model. This allows large surfaces, even large flat surfaces to be covered in color very quickly so that we don't need to spend so much time blending and so much time layering on the base coat. This translates to building the foundations very quickly and in a sense, because time is always limited, I have more time to spend on the details and I enjoy painting a lot more. No longer am I rushed to finish the details because of a strict timeline, because of overbrushing taking away the chunk of layering time at the start, I can really spend more time doing even more sick and fine edge highlights, creating even better blends and to a greater extent, adding some freehand to make the miniatures look a lot better. Being fast certainly has its perks because I get to focus on segments of the paint job which I actually enjoy, such as adding in a little bit of creative flair in the form of some kind of freehand or creating even more defined shapes and increasing the readability so that these miniatures will look so much better on the tabletop as well as in pictures. Not only that, as mentioned in the previous point, I can now more accurately gauge my timelines and I can set achievable timelines for myself so that I can finish the projects more or less on time and churn out more tutorials for the channel. So now that we have covered being fast and being happy, what's the third point? The third point is we are creating an additional layer of detail in the form of textures. So one benefit of overbrushing is that no longer are the blends completely smooth or in my case, in my 
inability to blend, no longer are the lines looking so obvious. Because of the texture and the feathering, it allows surfaces to be even more narrative. Say for example, my Chaos Knight Rampager, where I've created a really smooth blend on white on the carapace. However, because if you look closely, you can see the mottled effect. This really adds to the realism and age because no surface in real life is perfectly smooth and perfectly blended. So sometimes these textures can give unexpected results. For example, when I painted the Warcry Catacombs bridge, I didn't expect some of the dried paint to be left over on the stencil brush. Hence, it has caused some of the pigments to stick on the bridge. However, after glazing using dark oak flesh, these pigments immediately became so much more obvious. However, it can be also perceived as some degree of dirt and weathering on this, and it gives this bridge so much more character. And this unexpected results, sometimes it's why I feel you should try and pick up over brushing yourself too. So while talking about textures, what we are actually doing is, we are actually creating an additional layer of detail on top of what has been sculpted. Miniatures that have been sculpted tend to finish with smooth surfaces and micro details can't really be perceived. So the way that you have been over brushing, whether you've been stippling or just dragging the brush across to show some brush strokes, these things help to educate the viewer of what materials you are painting. And this really adds a nice degree of realism onto the model. Personally for me, I can't wait to try more different brushes on overbrushing to see what kind of textures do they create, whether this can be applied onto more organic surfaces or other surfaces so that we can add just that little bit of detail onto the miniatures that we are already painting. But let's be real, this is in no case the perfect painting technique. This definitely does have its downsides too. I'd like to share with you some of the downsides and some of the challenges I faced since I've picked up overbrushing. So at times when you need textures, overbrushing is really good to add this additional layer of textures. However, when you really need it to be smooth, overbrushing just cannot deliver that airbrush smooth finish that you really require. So sometimes, of course, I'm not saying that you should just throw away your airbrush set and just pick up the overbrush. Wrong. Why well, I would say that whenever suitable, use overbrush and whenever needed, just pick up the airbrush and go once more. And sometimes because you don't thin your paints down enough while overbrushing or agitate the paint while it's drying, these textures tend to build up over and over again and this cannot be reversed. The only way to reverse this is to strip the paint off. And if you really want a smooth finish, overbrushing isn't the technique for you or at least it isn't for this miniature project. So the next downside about overbrushing is, I've realized that I've lost some of my brush skills. So in this two and a half months or so, when I've been furiously overbrushing every single project which I'm painting right now, I found that I didn't have sufficient time to practice the fine skills of layering and creating very, very detailed objects. So at times, when I'm doing a freehand, it does take me some time to warm up to the brush again, to be familiar enough for the muscle memory to kick in. So what do I recommend while you're picking up overbrushing is that you continuously practice your other skills such as your edge highlighting and your layering whenever possible. Try to keep the painting process balanced and not just lean into one technique and rely on it like a crutch. So in conclusion, what I feel about overbrushing is that it's a very fast and efficient technique and it allows you to sit in one spot and cover a lot of area in a very short amount of time just like you would with an airbrush. It is a very fun and cathartic way to paint and I definitely recommend it for all you guys to try it out out there. However, I hope you guys remember some of the downsides for overbrushing and yeah, remember you need to use the right tools for the right time. Don't just use overbrushing for everything because it just doesn't work that way. It works for certain objects like mortar armor, big textured surfaces, these are awesome. However, if you're painting a face which requires a smooth finish like well, a female bust, I would not recommend overbrushing for these surfaces. So what do you think? Will you pick up overbrush? Let me know in the comments below, alright? So speaking about overbrushing, in the next video we'll be learning how to paint the moss green and black armor on my Chaos Knight Tyrant. I'd like to take this time to thank my patrons for allowing me to do this and to share my knowledge and experience with all you guys out there. So if you want to support the channel, do head on to the Patreon and become a patron today. However, if you can't become a patron, that's okay too. I'd like to thank you for your time for watching all the way to the end. So if you could, please leave me a like and subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see via a comment. Alright, so I hope to catch you in the next video. See you.